Like many others, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. In fact, our oldest daughter also loves Star Wars, and she and I have been enjoying watching YouTube videos that have been analyzing the Star Wars sequel trilogy, Episode 7, 8, and analyzing what they think is going to be happening in Episode 9. Or by the time you watch this, Episode 9 may have already been out, and there'll be videos analyzing what did happen, but I'm digressing. But we love watching videos about Star Wars. And one of the recurring themes that seems to be coming up frequently in people's analysis is this idea of the hero's journey. Well, this got me thinking, can the hero's journey be used to preach a biblical narrative? It's a good question in my mind. Maybe it's not in yours, but in my mind, it's a good question. So I started thinking, can it be used? And I came to a conclusion, and I want to talk about um, what I uh, what conclusion I came to. So before I get into it, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, the subscribe button, bell, you know the routine. routine I'll just press on from there. But if you don't know what the hero's journey is, here's a little bit about it. The hero's journey is a literary device. It's a motif, a storytelling um, device that was popularized by Joseph uh, Campbell. I'm looking at my notes. Yeah, Joseph Campbell in the 1940s and 1950s. Well, he came up with this very complex structure following a circle, and I, I'll put it on the screen here for you. But Joseph Campbell came up with this and popularized it. Well, the short version goes like this. The hero or protagonist sets out on, a, on an adventure. On this adventure, this hero or protagonist will encounter various trials, adversaries, and enemies. After facing all of these, the hero will return as a better person, able to teach others. That's the hero's journey in a nutshell. Now, what's interesting about the hero's journey is the hero, and I'll say he, it could be a she, uh, there's plenty of good she protagonists out there, um, but the hero, or you know, the, the protagonist, starts off with a great deal of potential. They have a lot of potential to be a, a hero, lack of a better term. So they set off on this, event, on this adventure, and the person, he ends up confronting enemies and adversaries and, and people that can help them, along, help them along the way, and all sorts of things. But in the process, the person will often fail at times, they will lose different conflicts, they will win some conflicts, but overall, through this process of facing hardships, they grow, they, gain, they grow in wisdom, they grow in ability, they grow in power or whatever they're growing in, they're growing. And after their adventure, they come home having learned many lessons from their failures and successes, and they are a better person as a result of it, and they can then help others to be better people. This is a powerful, powerful motif that uh, has been used in many major media. Uh, in fact, there's an article that um, looked at the hero's journey as it was used in Star Wars and used in The Matrix, and I'll put a link in the description down below. It's a very popular motif. In fact, Campbell and others had even taken this motif and applied it to other historical figures, and they even applied it to people like Moses and to Jesus. Well, can it be applied to biblical narrative? And by biblical narrative, I mean, for example, the story of the birth of Jesus, the, the story of the, um, the Exodus, the story of how Moses move, was moved, you know, went from you know, being born to being in um, Pharaoh's palace, um, story of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the story of the near... Um, sacrifice of Isaac. Uh, various narratives that are stories. Can the hero's journey be used to tell those? Well, maybe, maybe not. In part of my thinking about this, I, I thought of some pros, some positives, some good things, and some cons to the hero's journey as it applies to preaching a biblical narrative. The three pros to the hero's journey in light of a biblical narrative is the hero's journey is familiar to most audiences. We've seen Star Wars. 
We've seen The Matrix. We've seen countless other stories where someone goes out on an adventure, struggles, learns, grows, comes back better. We've seen that used over and over and over. The second pro to it is this is, is that the hero's narrative, or the hero, I'm sorry, the hero's journey is an established, effective storytelling device. It's a great narrative tool. If you're writing a short story or a novel and you're thinking about how to organize it, maybe you need to follow the hero's journey. And this, and why? Well, because of the third pro. The hero's journey is easily applicable to everyday life. You and I can relate to a hero who is flawed, a hero who struggles in life, a hero who has to learn through experience, a hero who, through this learning, grows and eventually overcomes whatever obstacle is in their way. We can relate to that because we all struggle in life. We all have things that we go through, and we all want to believe that we can get through it and be better in the end, so it's very applicable. But in light of using it with the biblical narratives, there's some cons, just some things to be weary of. First, the hero's journey may not align with the biblical narrative. Biblical narratives are written in a certain way. The author has a way of telling his, his story. His, because they're all written by guys. So the author, the author has a, a certain way of telling his story. And the hero's journey may not be a good fit for how that author has told the story. The narrative in the Bible may go a different way. And so trying to take it, take the biblical narrative and rewrite it and force it to conform to a man-made structure called the hero's journey may not be a good fit. It may not work well together. The second con is... The hero's journey often makes the moral lesson more of a focus than Christ. If you use a hero's journey uh, to tell a biblical narrative, it's hero's journeys are great because they're moral-based. There's a lesson in that we can learn from it. But the Bible is more than a moral lesson. Biblical narrative is more than just how to live right. It tells us something about Jesus. The stories in the Old Testament are stories that tell us about Jesus. The stories in the New Testament are stories that tell us about Jesus. And when we use a, a hero's journey, we may end up making the moral lesson more important than Jesus Christ. The third con to it is it overlooks the authorial intent or the author's style. Now, I hinted at this already, or may have outright said it, but the author has a certain intent in what he writes. And so he uses a certain style to help convey that intent. And when we take the author's intent and the author's style and force it into something that was maybe developed long later, I don't know if it really it was developed then, but take something that was developed and made popular in the 1940s and 50s, we may be obliterating authorial intent and we may be obliterating the author's own style. So there's some positives and some and some risks, negatives to the hero's journey being used to tell a biblical narrative. So what are my final thoughts on it? My final thoughts are this. If the biblical narrative fits with the hero's journey, if it is able to maintain its focus on Jesus Christ and share the gospel and tell what the text in Scripture is trying to convey, then feel free to use a hero, the hero's journey. However, if the hero's journey would, be, would take away from Scripture by ignoring the author's intent or even replacing it or ignoring it, if it would supplant Jesus with a moral lesson, then you may not want to use it. In fact, I would advise against using it and, and instead telling the biblical narrative the way the in the you know, style and in structure that the biblical author actually used. So I'm not going to say never use the hero's journey in a sermon, but I'm also not going to say, yes, absolutely, use it every time. You have to look at what the text says. And there's various philosophies of preaching, but my philosophy is stick to the text, make the text understood, 
because God gave us that text. It is His Word. We are called to preach the Word. That is, preach the written Word, that is Scripture, but also preach the living Word, Jesus Christ. So, whether you use a biblical narrative as it's written or you use a hero's journey, make I would say adopt my philosophy, not because it's mine, but because I believe that God's Word is God's Word, and we should preach God's Word. So, what are your thoughts? Do you agree, disagree, think I made some good, some good points, think my points are kind of, oh, you're nuts, John? Whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And uh, I, I got that phrase from another YouTuber. Anyway, but you know, comment below, let me know. And I'll, I'd love to see what you say. So in the meantime, have a great day and God bless. If you enjoy the content on this channel, then check out the merch, MP3s, and more at johnrotro.com.